Hello, welcome to another episode uh, at Animals at Home. Hopefully your day is going well. Today we're gonna be taking a look at hides. I've been wanting to make a DIY hide for a while now, so I, but I've been kind of dragging my feet on it because I didn't really know how I was gonna do it. Up until now, I've been using the PVC kind of reptile basics. It's tough to see through the reflection there, but you guys know what I mean. Just the regular reptile basics enclosure or uh, hides. Those work perfectly fine. I have no issue with them. Although I did want to make something a little bit, you know, more unique, I guess you could say. And right now, my animals have started to grow out of those. As you can see, here's Winston. Really a lot of reflection, but he's curled up right here. And sort of in lieu of making giving him a hide that would fit, I gave him this shoe box, which does not work because he turns it upside down basically every chance he gets. And then my other boa down here, I gave her a bigger shoe box, um, and she hasn't been able to tip that one over, but I really don't like the look of a shoe box. So we're gonna be taking a look at making our own. So I found a really unique way to do it and something that I haven't seen before uh, in terms of making your own hides. This is something that is in the craft hobby, which I'm definitely not a part of. So. I'll show you the two that I have started right now. These are kind of my testing ones. This is the first one that I did. I'm not totally happy with it. The problem with me is I'm a terrible painter. I have no idea how to paint fake rocks. So, but I'm gonna show you guys how I did this. This is rock hard, pretty cool. Uh, it's just black on the inside. I think it is sealed. It kind of looks like a rock, although, not the best. I really am not the best painter. So then I end up doing it. My second test were one I found this stone spray paint, which is what I originally wanted, but I couldn't find it originally. Thought so. I thought I was gonna have to paint everything by hand. So the second one that I did does look a little bit better. It's gonna need another coat because you can see some clay shining through. But this does look like a rock to me. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did this. We're gonna get going right now. I have four more to make. So let's get to it. So I'll just say two quick things about this method that I'm about to show you before we start. The first is I did not make this up. I found it on a craft website or a craft YouTube channel. I'll put that link below so you guys can see the real version of how to do it because she does it excellent compared to the way I do it. And the second thing is this is not necessarily a cheaper way to make a hide and it's very time consuming. It's taking me, it takes several days to do this to allow things to dry out. So really, if you have kids or you like doing projects, you like building stuff, do this, it's fun. If you enjoy that, or if you have kids that like that sort of thing, that you could, this is definitely a great project for that. But if you are looking for a quick and easy way, do not do this. I do not recommend this. The Reptile Basics hides work perfectly fine. So now that we have the layers of tin foil, this is gonna be what's gonna make up the structure of our hide. Now this is what the great thing about this, this method is that you really have a lot of control over the shape. So what you need to find is an object, something that you wanna to use to kind of template your shape. I'm gonna use this. In the last two I used kind of a large bowl, but I don't need as large of a hide for these other animals. So I'm just gonna use this, I'm gonna shove it in. So right now it looks pretty bad, which is kind of okay. What we can, what we can do with this is we can shape it sort of any way we want. Okay, so I forgot to hit record and I've already started the next step. But anyway, what I just said uh, to nobody was now that we have the rough shapes, this is the kind of the rough shape of the hide. Now this is a much smaller structure than the last ones I showed you. The last ones were much larger, sort of bolder type. This is gonna, this one's just lower to the ground. I just wanted to do a different shape and just for a smaller animal. So, so it that doesn't need to be quite as large. Now the next phase takes a lot of time and that is you have to cover the entire thing with masking tape, just like this. I've already put a few layers on. Now, you don't have to worry about the shape of the hide just yet because we still have a lot of flexibility with it. Once the masking tape's on, I'll show you guys how we, uh, we can change the shape. A 
Okay, so now that it's completely covered in masking tape, it kind of looks like a weird Ninja Turtle shell or something, but now I have a ton of pliability with it and I can basically do with, 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 with it with whatever I want. So I can kind of bend it and shape it and it's not gonna sit perfectly flat, but I don't really care about that because I do use natural substrate in all my enclosures, so any of the air gaps will be filled by substrate. As long as it's roughly there, it will be fine. And then I found taking an object and just kind of whacking it will give it a little bit of a natural look to it. And any mistakes you make, you can just pop back out. But you can just give them a little, little bit of a whack to make it look more natural. There we go. Kind of looks like a rock, but also kind of looks like a hamburger bun. All right, so the next step after applying the tape is gonna be basically paper macheing it. So you're probably familiar with how to do that. You can just make a paper mache kind of glue, which is literally just a, this is just a school non-toxic white glue and mix with water to thin it out. And then I'm just applying it with one of these foam things. I don't know what you call that. You find these in the art store. And then I'm using just regular thin tissue paper. So this is just a white tissue paper, nothing special about it. And I'm just applying that all over the structure. And this is just gonna give it a little more rigid rigidity and strength. It's a little bit time consuming and tedious as well. Okay, so the paper macheing is completely done. So the entire thing is covered or coated with the tissue paper. Now this takes quite a while to dry, maybe four or five hours, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna let it dry overnight. Now, believe it or not, there is still one more tedious step in this entire process. By the end of this video, this is basically gonna be a sales pitch for store-bought hides just because of how much work this is. Again, I don't recommend doing this unless you enjoy these projects. So we're gonna let this dry and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so as the paper mache was drying on the first one that I had just done, I actually made and paper mache the second hide that I did, and that one's right here. So I went back to kind of a more of a rock shape. So that one is fully mache and I'm waiting for it to dry. I know at the beginning of the video, I did say I was gonna make four, and I changed my mind, I'm only gonna make two, uh, for a total of four, because I had already made two. Now these are the ones that I have right now. So this is the paper mache coat, still waiting on that to dry. This is almost finished product. It needs another coat of spray paint and that was the original one that I showed you. So I did originally say that I was gonna do four for a total of six so I could have two in each of my boas enclosures, but I'm kind of second guessing putting this type of hide in my Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure because I do think the humidity may uh, damage it a little bit. I think it, I, I should probably stick with something plastic for that enclosure because the humidity is so high and kind of thankfully because these do take a lot of time. So I'm gonna pause for today because I need to let this paper mache dry, but uh, we're gonna continue on tomorrow and I'll show you the next step, which involves coating the entire thing with clay. As I said, lots of tedious steps, but it's worth it. All right, so it is the next day and the paper mache is completely dry. So the next step is adding paper clay to the outside of the hide. Now, I bought this from uh, Michael's Craft Store. I think you could probably buy it at any craft store. There's probably several different brands. I like this brand, but I know it's non-toxic when it dries. I recommend buying store-bought paper clay rather than making it just because the chemicals, I know this is non-toxic and there's kind of strange chemicals in DIY paper clay. Now the good thing about paper clay is it does air dry, so you don't have to put it in the oven or anything, although you can to make it dry faster, so we might end up doing that. So this stuff, it just peels off. I'm gonna take it, and we're just gonna spread it on slowly to the surface of the hide. And this is gonna give the hide even that extra strength. It's gonna be nice and hard once this dries. And it will also give you the opportunity to add any design that you want. If you wanna do any, you know, draw any lines into the clay. This clay dries very slow, so you have a lot of time to work with it. Now, I'm not a good enough artist to be carving in, you know, rock features into this clay, but if you feel like you're comfortable doing that and you wanna try, this is definitely a good way to go. Now, I'm only gonna put the clay on the top part of the hide. You definitely could put it on the inside, and if you did that, it would be extremely strong. It would be very, very hard. I just don't feel like it's necessary. The top is definitely gonna provide enough structure to it and it, the, the clay itself is relatively expensive. I think I paid about 12 or $14 for that package, which isn't bad, but I'll probably go through this entire thing for both these hides, so just save a little bit of money. It's not necessary to go on the inside. 
Okay, so the first hide has been completely covered in clay. You can see the inside is still the paper mache, but this is now completely covered. And, and as I said, this would be the opportunity that you want to take if you if you were artistic enough to you know carve details in. I'm not going to do that because I have a knack for making crafts look worse when I try to do things. So I'm just going to leave it like this and let it dry, and uh, we'll get to the next one. And you can see I went through about you know 40% of that clay brick on just that. All right, so they're both completely covered in clay now. Now, typically I've found that it takes about 24 hours for this to completely harden, but I'm actually gonna try putting them in the oven at the lowest setting at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, just for a few hours to see if I can speed up that process a little bit. All right, so about 45 minutes in the oven and these things are completely solid, so we're ready to paint them. All right, so to paint these, I'm gonna be using this spray paint. Oh, French side. So I, I have this product and then I have this one, a Krylon. Um, this is more of a lighter color. So I've already done this one on the, the first one I did. So I'm gonna test out this product as well. I have a feeling I'm gonna like the darker color better, but whatever, I thought I might as well try both. And of course, like I said, you can paint things by hand if you are talented enough to do so. I am not. So we're gonna head outside and excuse the mess. I'm just in the middle of cleaning some cages. I don't know if you can see. Uh, we're gonna head outside to spray paint. Unfortunately, it's, it's not that cold that it's only minus four right now, but that is way too cold obviously to leave these things to dry outside. They'll never dry in that temperature. So I do have to sort of bring them inside and deal with the fumes for a little bit. I thought, oops. So as I thought, I'm not a huge fan of the lighter color. I think it will look okay after a few coats. Right now it doesn't look the best. I think I'll do at least one more coat. It should look a little bit better. But I do think I'm gonna finish off my last one with the darker stone. I only have a little bit left, so I probably don't have enough for two coats. So this is what I'm gonna do. Um, one thing I noticed on the first round of the darker coat was that a lot of the white lighter clay was poking through uh, after I spray painted it. So what I'm gonna do, with this one, before I spray paint it, I'm actually gonna paint it a dark color with just some regular acrylic paint. So I'm just gonna paint it like a dark gray. That way, uh, any of the clay that pokes through is just gonna show as up as gray and not as white, and then it, I'll probably get away with just one coat. So again, this is just regular art, kind of acrylic craft uh, paint. Just gonna put a little bit of black, and then just a tiny bit of white. I want this to be fairly dark gray. And for the last thing, I just used this matte finish from Krylon and just gave each one a once over one coat just to give it a nice, a little bit better seal and a little bit more moisture resistance. Alright, so it's several days later and this these are completely dry, they've cured. I left them about three or four days after spraying that clear sealant on. It did give off a lot of fumes, especially after like leaving having to let them dry inside. Um, but I'm really happy with the way they look. They you know they're all different, they're all a little bit unique. You can have a lot of flexibility with the you know the outcome in the end. So these do look like rocks to me. I really love the way they look. I'm excited to add them into the enclosures. I'm gonna still give it another two or three weeks before I add them in. Everything is cured at this point, but I just like to play it safe and allow everything to cure, you know, several weeks over the, the expected um, cure rate on the, on the spray paint and everything, just because obviously there's no need to put it in any earlier. So if you do want to see them inside the enclosure, just go follow me on Instagram. It's at, at, at animals at home, CA, and uh, I'll eventually post an update on there when I add them into the enclosures. I'm sure the animals are going to love them. <laughs> 